Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a number that we want to simplify. Just like simplifying any number, there are ways to simplify numbers. Hey, like 2 over 4. You'd simplify that. You write it as 1 over 2. Uh, the simplifying here is the fact that this is a pretty big degree, degree 10. So the question is, is there any way we can sort of distill this number down? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we get off on a tangent with de Morey's theorem, that to come, I want to establish why we probably want to use de Morey here. Because look at this. This is a binomial expansion problem. It's The exponent is 10. So one thing you could do, I suppose, is you could evaluate both cos and sine at 2 pi over 3 and get them as ordinary numbers. But then you're going to have to expand it out, either by using the distributive property, no, or you could use the binomial theorem. Most of you know what that is. And again, no. So we need an alternative to this. And so back to regular programming. Well, first off, notice that it's a complex number because it has the letter I in it. And um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take advantage of a theorem called de Morey's theorem. And what de Morey tells us is that if we have um, the cosine of an angle plus i times the sine of that exact same angle all to the power of n, then that can be written equivalently, this is a theorem, so it's been proven, as the cosine of n theta plus i times the sine of n theta. Okay, so that's, that's just fact. We can use that theorem. And if you've watched any of my past videos, we use this theorem when we solve um, polynomials with complex roots. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at the structure that I have here. Um, it looks kind of like this. The problem is, de Morey, this is a plus, okay, and this is a minus. So, what I could do though is notice, look, and I've got a negative sign. So what do I know about negative sign of an angle? Well, I do know a little bit about the sine wave. If you just visualize it, it's an odd function, meaning that the negative sign is equal to the sine of the negative angle. <laughs> so you can take negative sine, and that's going to be equal to sine of negative theta. Basically, what we're saying here is that if you were to vertically reflect the sine wave and someone else on their page horizontally reflected it, you'd get the same image. So this is, a tr this is something that we can use for here. Look, I could swap out. I've got a negative sign, so I could make that positive, positive, but I have to put a negative right here. Okay, that's okay. The other problem that I'm seeing now before I dive into de Morey is that these angles here have to be equivalent. So what do I know about the cosine of an angle? Well, I happen to know that the cosine of an angle is equal to cosine of its negative counterpart. Again, if you just visualize the cosine wave, um, this, is a, this property is true. If you horizontally reflect the cosine wave around the y-axis, it's the same picture, right? So these are this is true, meaning I could just decide to put a minus right there if I wanted to, and I'm going to, because now look, this is fitting the picture. There's a plus. These angles are identical, meaning that I can now take this power and apply it as a stretch on theta. So now I could write my original statement here. I'll write it in black. Um, that's going to be equal to the cosine. No, that's green. That's not what I want. So the cosine equals the cosine of, well, 10 times 2, negative 20 pi over 3, plus I sine negative 20 pi over 3. I'll just put brackets around that just because it looks a little busy. And now, is there any way I can distill that down? Well, of course I can, because that's the cosine of an angle. Look, the denominator is 3. So it looks like it's a multiple of pi over 3. Um, if I was to take negative 20 pi over 3, uh, maybe I'll just go for the principal angle or the smallest positive by adding multiples of the period. 
which is going to be 6 pi over 3. 2 pi is um, one rotation. Uh, maybe I'll add that four times. And that's going to give me 4 pi over 3. You could have used negative 2 pi over 3 or 2 if you wanted. But I'm just using a positive angle. Um, so in this case here, um, my, my, my problem, I'll just put that to the side. So I've got an equals cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus i times the sine of 4 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3, I'll just draw it. 4 pi over 3 is going to be down here in the third quadrant. Boom. And so that means that my reference angle here is pi over 3, meaning this is root 3 with a minus. This is 2, and this is negative 1. And so what I know is that the cosine is going to be equal to the x-coordinate divided by the radius, or negative 1 over 2, plus i times the sine. Well, the sine is going to be the y-coordinate, which is negative root 3. So negative root 3 divided by 2. And there it is. There's the number. I've got it. I've simplified it. I'm no longer in degree 10. I don't even have any coses or sines. I've just got a regular old complex number written in Cartesian form. All right, if you liked the video today, don't forget to slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also hit that little bell for regular notifications so you can find out whenever I upload. And share this with anybody who you think the channel that you think might benefit from these videos. And I'll see you right back here in the next video.